much, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I, I guess after this talk, I will be in the minority, but we'll see. Um, the practice of carotid stents uh, in UK and in Europe, uh, less so in states, uh, received a big blow after publishing the results of the ICSS trial and a couple of other European trials because of the results show that the, uh, the, the, the stroke, mainly the, 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 number, the risk of stroke post-procedure uh, is higher with carotid stenting in favor of carotid endarterectomy. Then, since then, that was in 2006-2007, a lot of technology has come through. Uh, the, the stent technology uh, changed dramatically in terms of the not only open and closed cells, but also the material use, the, the mesh stents that comes, the, the, micro, the size of the micropores, which uh, in theory gives a lot of protection to the uh, plug when you deploy the stent and also the approach to those uh, lesions. So we, we heard uh, earlier on about the transcervical carotid stenting and also the uh, stenting using the transradial. So we, you avoid the uh, hostile arch and you have um, a shorter path into the uh, lesion. Then we had the uh, long-term results of the uh, ICSS uh, trial published in 2015, which showed that the number of fatal or disabling strokes and cumulative five-year risk, uh, five risk did not differ significantly between the two groups. And the, the, the any stroke still higher in the carotid uh, stenting, mainly because of the earlier events uh, of the stroke post-procedure. But there was no significant difference in the uh, modified Rankin score, so the, the functional outcome has not really uh, dif uh, uh, different between the endarterectomy and stent, and the interpretation of the trial organizers that long-term functional outcome and risk of fatal or disabling stroke is similar in both uh, modalities. We had another setback when the uh, results published about the restenosis uh, rate of post-stenting uh, and carotid uh, endarterectomy. There's uh, more than 50% stenosis. The CAS is, uh, has a higher incidence compared to carotid endarterectomy. And also showed that those with restenosis has higher incidence of uh, stroke, but Ironically, the stroke is higher in endarterectomy, not in the uh, uh, carotid stent uh, group. The SCST2 trial uh, published uh, their, their uh, midterm results as well. This, this uh, a big trial, randomized of 3,625 patients, divided equally between CAS and carotid endarterectomy. The overall disabling stroke was not really different between the two modalities, is 1% versus 0.9, and disabling stroke was slightly higher in the uh, stenting group, but there was higher, slightly higher incidence of myocardial infarction in the endarterectomy, and quite uh, high incidence of cranial nerve injury, which is still considered as a complication, but not really uh, as looked at seriously. Uh, the mean hospital stay was much shorter with the carotid uh, stenting. And the interpretation of the, uh, this trial that the serious complications are similarly uncommon in both uh, groups uh, and the long-term effect of these stents on fatal and disabling so are comparable. Now looking at the real-world uh, real data uh, from the German registry and other registries, the the incidence of the, uh, whether symptomatic or asymptomatic, with all those events of major stroke and minor stroke, death, MI, everything, all those variables that we look at are very similar uh, between the two groups. There is also, uh, we can see that the complications beyond stroke are also consistent, that we have higher incidence of bleeding and nerve palsy and MI uh, in endotrexomy than in carotid stents, not reaching statistically significant, but still higher incidence uh, than carotid stenting. So why is this uh, 
I mean, this before, before I go, go to this why, the, the, the guidelines, whether the Stroke Association or the, Crotid, the, the, sorry, the European Cardiology Society and the ESVS guidelines, they all remain consistent, that at least they don't recommend carotid stent if they don't disregard it completely as in the uh, uh, Stroke Guidelines or Stroke Association Guidelines. The usual argument against carotid stenting continues, that it causes more severe stroke, which now we know is not entirely true. Uh, that's shown in the ACSST, and also the long-term outcome in the ACSS does not support that. More non-disabling non stroke, yes, but the, again, that the, the, what's the functional outcome? If it's not affected, what's the significance of this? There's more restenosis, yes, but the, the outcome of the restenosis, as shown in the ICS, ICSS uh, long-term analysis, does not really make any difference. More microembolization, well, the, the, the published results, again, of the ICS does not support that because the, the modified Rankin score is no different between the two approaches. So to conclude, I think CAS has a comparable risk to carotid endotrectomy and disabling stroke, especially for asymptomatic patients, and should be offered in those patients as an equal alternative uh, and in unbiased way to the patients. Uh, carotid stenting has equal functional outcome and uh, risk of disabling stroke in symptomatic patients, and is considered a valid alternative in those patients it's a very important thing, and it's the argument that the, the new technology, which in the vascular world we're familiar with when we talk about the EVAR1 and EVAR2, it's a similar thing here. I think in the new technology, whether we heard today about the transcervical and those new stent technology and transradial approach, should be appraised properly so we can reach a more sensible conclusions. Thank you very much.